Today we are going to learn how to embroider the red cardinal pattern for this ornament in the shape of a heart from my Christmas collection that I am designing this year. What makes this pattern so enjoyable is the creative journey it takes you on while learning how to master the long and short stitch with split. I've published a video where I'm showing you all the supplies you need for this project and how to transfer the pattern onto fabric. In that video, the embroidery pattern is different from this one, but don't worry, the supplies and the process are the same for all the ornaments in this collection. This applies to the sewing and the stuffing process as well. If you are planning to create this ornament, you have to see that video first. Go ahead and watch that tutorial and then come back to this one to learn how to embroider this specific ornament. Hi there! It's Stella here from Why Not Stitches and I'm here to walk you through the entire process of creating this lovely ornament. This video comes in help if you are a total beginner and need a little bit of guidance to make sure you are on the right track. I am pretty hooked on creating video tutorials and I would love to know what would you like to learn from me. Just drop a comment below and I promise I'll take notes and create useful video tutorials in the future. This is how the red cardinal design looks traced onto cotton fabric. I've traced the pattern with this heat erasable pen. I'm gonna use a cross stitch needle size 26 for all the stitches and this color palette. Place your fabric in the 6 inch hoop and stretch it from all sides to make sure it lies straight and tight in the hoop. Let's begin with this brown color. We are going to stitch the branches first. Cut a piece of thread and use only three strands. The best practice to thread your needle is to have the ends of the threads straightened. Then pinch the thread between your fingers, flatten it, gently pull down the thread and hide it almost entirely. Then guide your needle between your fingers and as you push the needle down, gradually release the thread. As soon as you see that all the threads have passed through the eyelet, grasp them with your thumb finger and gently pull them through. I'm working long and short stitches with split and starting with three stitches, a long one and two shorter ones. From now on, each new stitch should split the previous one, covering entirely the shape of the branch. When you reach this edge where the branch meets the bird, place the endings of the stitches in a straight line. Then, to make the branch thinner at the endings, I am placing less stitches and slowly transitioning to a split stitch. The split stitch is different from the long and short stitch with split because the first one is an outline stitch, while the long and short stitch with split is good for covering large areas. Practically, all the thin branches on this embroidery are stitched with split stitch. At first I hadn't thought of embroidering leaves in this pattern, but then I felt like there is something missing chromatically. So I sketched the leaves and used the light turquoise thread, in three strands of course. I'm going to stitch the leaves with satin stitch. I usually start from the center of the leaf and stitch one side, then the other one. 
This way I have more control over the final shape. While I make some stitches from the edge to the middle, I also place a few shorter stitches that go from the edge of the leaf near the center of the previous stitch. Another thing I'm doing to increase the angle of my stitches is to make some stitches that go from the edge of the leaf to the center of it in the same hole as the previous stitch. When I work small leaves, I just make a few stitches that meet on one end in the same hole or pretty close to it. Now let's stitch the red berries with colonial knots. To make a colonial knot, bring your needle up on the front of the fabric, make a loop and insert your needle in the loop from the front of it. Then wrap your working thread around the needle from the front of it to the back. Take the needle back into the fabric next to where you came out but not in the same hole. If I have to use knots in my pattern designs, I prefer using colonial knots. They came easier to me when I was learning how to embroider. There is also a French knot. It looks similar to this one, but the way you have to wrap your thread around the needle is a bit different. Okay, now that all the elements are done, I'm going to embroider the bird using this color palette. I'm creating satin stitches for the beak and the black area around it. To embroider the body, I'm using four strands. And I'm working a long and short stitch with split. Start from the top of the head and place your first stitches on the traced outlines. Then create one stitch in the middle. All of them should come down into the fabric in the same hole. On the next row we want to multiply the number of stitches. For that you need to create some stitches that go down into the fabric in between the previous stitches. But most of the stitches should split the previous ones. Maybe it will be easier if I draw some direction guides for the stitches for this shape. It's not going to be easy if you are just starting with embroidery. I'll let you watch a speed up of my process so you can take your time to understand the steps to fill the entire shape of the body. And this is how the embroidery looks without outlines and next to it is how it looks with black outlines. Now I'm going to stitch with two strands of thread the outlines on the bird. But first let me show you how I did the long insertions on the wings. It's practically a straight stitch made on top of the previous layer of stitches. The outlines around the body are made with backstitch and when I reach the tail of the bird, I make some insertions as I did for the wing. 
For the rest of the outlines on the branches and leaves, I'm going to use just one strand and will work backstitch on one side of each element. It will create a sense of shade on entire embroidery. I hope you got the idea how to stitch the outlines by now. It's the easiest part of this embroidery, but I'll let you watch how I do it for a while. When it comes to embroidering the snow on the branches, we are going to make a few split stitches just on some of the branches. This is how the final embroidery looks, I love how it turned out and I hope you like it too. Now that you've reached this point in the process, it's time for you to watch that video where I'm showing you how to sew the heart by hand, how to stuff the heart and how to finish it. The link is of course below this video. I'm so excited to announce that I'll be designing a total of 8 patterns in this Christmas ornament collection. If you feel inspired, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell button to be the first one to know when I publish a new tutorial. Thank you for staying with me till the end of this video, I love when you do that. Happy stitching and see you soon!